Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to change your engine oil and engine oil filter on your 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, or 2024 Mitsubishi Mirage. And this applies to all of the trim levels from ES, LE, BE, SE, GT, and Rally Art. The first thing you need to change the oil is a cup of coffee. The first thing you need to do is get your car up on either jack stand or ramps. Jack stands can feel a little bit more sketchy. Ramps can also be sketchy. You might feel like you're going to drive off the side of them. You choose which one you want. There's videos on YouTube on how to jack your car up. This is not a video on how to jack your car up. The car takes zero W20 oil. Some say you should get Mobile One oil. Some say you should get Mitsubishi oil. Some say you should get something like AMS oil, which is the best oil you can possibly get. In my mind, if you change the oil regularly, it really shouldn't matter which oil you get. I'm changing the oil at the interval the car says, which is every 3,750 miles. So I got the literal cheapest oil you can possibly get from Kirkland. It's $40 for 20 quarts, so $2 a quart. And some say you should get the Mobile One oil filter, some say you should get the Wix filter, some say you should get the Fram filter. I say to stick with the OEM Mitsubishi filter. It's about the same price as all of the other ones. More than the Fram filter, but cheaper than the Mobile One filter. And the reason why we would go with the Mobile One, by the way, is to reduce the cold start rattle, but I actually don't notice the difference between the OEM Mitsubishi filter and the Mobile One filter. So I just stick with the OEM Mitsubishi filter. But with the Wix filter and Fram filter and STP filter I've tried, they rattle more on cold starts. Either way, for engine oil, you will need approximately 3 to 3.3 quarts, which is less than one of these bottles. The reason I have two bottles here is because one of them is almost empty, so I'm going to use that up as well. Other things you will need is a big pan like this. You can get them at Old Riley's, AutoZone, Walmart, even the dollar store and you will need a funnel, which you can get at all of those stores I just mentioned as well. Make sure the funnel is clean. It doesn't matter so much if the oil pan is clean though, because that's just trash oil that you're taking out of the car. Once the car is up off the ground, the side you're going to be working on is the passenger side. You're going to want to lay on the driver's side. So get a towel and lay it out on the ground so it's a little bit more comfortable on the driver's side. Also for this, you will need two tools. You will need a torque wrench, but you may or may not need, you just have to torque it down to 24 foot-pounds. If you know what that feels like by hand, torque it down by hand without a torque wrench. You could probably do it just fine. Many do. I prefer the torque wrench. And then you need a oil filter wrench, which looks like this. Well, it actually looks like this. And this is the size that you need for the Mitsubishi Mirage oil filter. It is 65 to 67 millimeters. Oh, and paper towels, yeah get some of those as well. The first thing you need to do to change the oil is pop the hood open for a couple reasons. Well actually first roll the windows down. If you accidentally lock the keys in the car while getting in and out a whole bunch of times while working on it, it's good to just have the windows open just in case. Either way the first thing you need to do though is pop the hood. It's recommended to pull the dipstick out of the engine. The reason why is you don't end up starting the car and not remembering if you put oil in it or not. It's just a little safety thing. Hey, if you have the dipstick out, you know it's not ready to be started. And also, it might help the oil drain out of the engine as well if you have the dipstick open from the top. Either way, oil-wise, my oil doesn't look bad. It has three and a half thousand miles on it, roughly. I'm changing it slightly early because I got the engine pretty hot because it was extremely hot outside recently. By the way, under the engine on the passenger side, you will see this. This is the oil pan for the engine and the oil pan drain plug. On the passenger side, you will see this, which is the transmission oil pan and transmission oil pan drain plug. We are not touching this today. Either way, over on this side, you have a 17 millimeter socket you need to take off the drain bolt. I am using my torque wrench to take this off. By the way, even though you need 25 foot pounds to install the drain plug, taking it off, you don't want to accidentally go way over what you have your torque wrench set to. So set your torque wrench pretty high. In my case, I have my torque wrench set to 50 pounds. 
for some reason let's say you have it set to 20 pounds and taking the bolt out takes 50 pounds of force it can actually mess up the calibrations of the torque wrench i don't quite get why but i've done it before don't do that by the way if this is your first time ever changing the oil on your car you do not need a crush washer for the drain plug but if you have changed your oil multiple times in the past or you've had someone else do it for you it's a good idea to have the crush washer it's like a dollar or two dollars from Mitsubishi or you can get it at AutoZone as well if you'd like either way this is the point where you need a paper towel and I've left them up on top of the engine oh dear one moment I got some paper towels and out so we have this bolt lined up with the pan I hope so let's unscrew this actually let's use our other hand for this all right and once you get the bolt a little bit loose you'll see it starts to seep go out from the top if you can you couldn't even see that I was more focused on doing it Try to lift the bolt up that way, all right? Like, it's it's in the pan. You lift it up that way. And the reason why is it doesn't get your hands quite as dirty, but you'll still get dirty either way. Gloves are recommended. How did I get oil all the way over there? <laughs> I don't even know. That is impressive. You'll see there's that crush washer on there. Make sure you don't lose that. Keep the washer on the drain bolt, all right? Only take it off if you're replacing it. By the way, it is actually recommended to replace it every single oil change, so I find every other oil change works fine. Let's just sit here for a few minutes while we get bit by some ants and wait for that to stop dripping or slow down. Once it starts getting to the point where it gets blown around by the wind extremely easily is when I start to consider putting the bolt back in. Okay, I think that is probably good. We're, we're like dripping everywhere at this point. You can go longer if you'd like, but I would like to not make the whole driveway full of, well, oil. So put the rain bolt back in. Make sure to clean your hands off. Wipe up any drips around here while you're at it. Next, put your torque wrench to 25 foot pounds and push up. But I don't have enough strength to do this one hand because I need to keep the torque wrench straight while also applying 25 foot pounds. I need to hold that end of the torque wrench over there uh, just so it doesn't fall off uh, but yeah tighten it down to 25 foot pounds until your torque wrench makes a clicking sound i have a harbor freight torque wrench i really don't trust it i'm afraid i will strip off the bolt if i go any tighter and it's not clicking i can't even get it to click by hand so i don't know if it's under tightened or over tightened but I don't trust the torque wrench. I have stripped out bolts in the past because I didn't hear the click. I just kept going and going and going. All of a sudden, oh, the screw broke off. And yeah, I don't want to do that. Luckily, this oil pan is replaceable, but they are not cheap. So just don't do that. I know for a fact in the condition it's in right now, it might just be a drip at worst, all right? It's not going to dump all the oil out because I don't have it tightened enough. So that is the oil pan. If we look our way up through here, you will see nothing. Yeah, okay, let's go further up into here. Do you see that? That's the oil filter right there. It's the big round cylinder. I cannot figure out how to show you with my hand. It's, it's that right there. That's the oil filter. And some go over and remove this pan, or not pan, this little tray here to get to the filter, but you don't need to. Sometimes you can get this off by hand, and sometimes you have to hook that socket wrench on, or the oil filter wrench onto here to get it off. I'm going to try to get it off by hand, because you are not supposed to tighten this with a wrench. You're only supposed to loosen it with a wrench. And sometimes you can actually get this off by hand. I don't have high hopes that I can get this off by hand, but I'm going to try. When you're down here, because everything is backwards, you need to turn the filter this way to get it loose. And I actually can get it loose by hand. It took a lot of effort, but it is kind of loose. So loosen it up a little bit. Make sure to spill oil everywhere because it's really hard to do this without spilling oil everywhere. Uh, the, the oil is going to just drip down randomly. That's really what's going to happen here. And we'll just let it do its thing. Again, make sure to have hundreds of paper towels nearby for this. 
<laughs> Maybe wear some gloves as well while you're at it. That is not a bad idea at all. So it is best to not bother touching the oil filter until this is pretty much done dripping. That way you minimize the amount of oil you have run down your arm and fly into your face and eyeballs. I think that's probably fine. So now let's go up to here and unscrew it. And it's, oh, I just tightened it by mistake. Let's loosen it. And when you take it out, aim it upwards like this. Just to try to minimize the oil that sprays everywhere, because if I went that way, there's even more oil that comes out. And when it comes to getting the filter, you just take it out of the box, and you'll see it has a wrapper on it. Some don't, some do. Take the wrapper off, and try not to dump it on the ground 17 times. Once you get the wrapper off, you'll notice there's, like, oil on the gasket. Though, according to the instructions, it says apply a thin film of oil to the gasket. So that's what I'm going to do anyway, even though they already pre-added the oil, it seems. Some say use brand new oil for this. Well, does it really matter? I'm just going to use the old oil. Both of them are fine. I've never had a problem from using the oil, old oil for this. And that's just what I have available at this point in time. Some say pre-fill the filter. Mitsubishi does not say pre-fill the filter, but... You could, it won't hurt anything, but in this case, pre-filling the filter will do absolutely horrendous things because you have the filter at this angle when you're putting it on. So you're going to get all that fresh brand new oil down your arm and into your face. So just don't do that. Now, next is something that I've actually seen a couple people not want to get this car just because of this reason. Installing the oil filter. All right, it's a little bit hard to see so let me just show you so right here all right do you see this little flange thing here oh, i got oil on me now so that is where the filter needs to go where's the new filter there it is it needs to go above this flange so you might think all right it goes right here nope it goes higher than you actually think it should all right that's just a tip of the day which way to tighten? Yeah, I forget which way to tighten it, by the way. That's another reason why I showed in the video. Uh, by the way, you cannot tighten this from the top. It, but yeah, just remember, put it higher than you think it needs to go. It takes a little bit of feeling around, but I've gotten it done. So we just tighten it down by hand. If you can't get a good grip because your hand's too oily, you can use that filter to tighten it down just slightly, but just tighten it as tight as you can by hand. In this case, I did a pretty good job, and uh, we don't need to use that wrench to tighten it down, all right? We really don't. We are good. And, well, we're pretty much done down here. Make sure to wipe up your mess that you've made, because well, you made a, you definitely made a mess, all right? There's, oh no. That's not what I wanted, and I've definitely made a mess as well, right as I said that. If you made a big mess down here and you want it to look nice and shiny, get brake cleaner, all right? Brake cleaner literally melts oil away. Mechanics tend to use brake cleaner exactly for this reason. Just most of the time brake cleaner is used, it's not used to clean brakes. It's used to, uh, well, melt away oil. It has nothing to do with brakes. <laughs> That's just how it is. Now, for putting oil in, if I'm not mistaken, some people say do not use 0W20. Use 5W20 or something like that. And it does say you can in the owner's manual, but it says as soon as you can, swap it back to 0W20. It will not grenade the engine immediately if you do that, but it's not a good idea to put in oil the engine is not wanting. And when it comes to your oil filler thing here, funnel, make sure it's clean on the inside because whatever garbage is inside the oil uh, funnel goes into the engine. I washed it out and dried it so it's nice and clean. So I can see on this half empty bottle we have about 1.7 quarts left. So I'm going to get this full bottle and empty it down to about 1.7 quarts and then pour the remaining of that into that bottle and then we'll have well, a brand new bottle here almost. That just makes the math a little bit easier for me. 
I'm not a math person. By the way, do not pour the oil this way, all right? Instead, pour it sideways. That will minimize the amount of glugging that you have and minimize the amount of splashing you have. If you don't believe me, try it both ways and see what happens. So I've put in about 3.3 quarts. If we look down here at the funnel of, well, not funnel, if we look down here, this is the new bottle and this is the old bottle. It's yeah, right around 3.3. I have a little bit less in. I think it was slightly overfilled last time. I'm trying to make this perfect. So all you need to do now is just dump some more oil on the ground while you uh, take the funnel out because that's exactly what you're supposed to do. And put the cap back on and start the engine. But we can also come over and take a look at how much oil we have in here. And on the dipstick it is over full but that is fine because it still needs to fill up the oil filter and we're on an angle as well which makes it a bit more complicated. If you have, a, for example, a lift, this would be accurate because lifts are level, but in this case, we don't have a lift. So, we just kind of eyeball it. I just know 3.3 quarts is about what you need to put in. So now, take note of how many miles you have on the car. Write that down, or maybe put a sticker up there to remind you. I don't do that, but write it down so you know when you change the oil last, and then after three months or 3,750 miles, come back and change the oil again. The manual says you can go up to 7,500 miles, only under the condition you do basically entirely freeway driving, don't drive the car hard and are in cool weather or and, and not dusty all right just just change it earlier 5,000 miles maximum if you really want to keep the car long change it around 3,500 to 4,000 all right that's just best more oil changes can't hurt less oil changes can hurt and they can cause the ledge as well either way let's start the car you can see there's low oil light and that did some rattling you can avoid that rattling if you have flood safe mode but yeah this car does not have that mode but yeah we got the car running here and let me get out real quick make sure we have everything all buttoned up here to move it around it is so now let's just back it out part way into the street here and get the car flat let it sit for a minute and check the oil again just to see what it's at. I just went over and parked the car like this so it's pretty much as level as it can possibly get and I'll just let the car sit here for about yeah two minutes maybe and see what the oil level is. Oh no the perfectly white towel that I used for drying the car got swept up by the wind and now it's in the engine oil that is we'll just ignore that Yep, I pretend we didn't see that. All right, it's been a few minutes, and looking at the oil, it's a little bit bubbly from just running the engine, but it is right on the money, right there. That I don't think can be much better than it already is. So I just drove it around the block three times, floored it once, just, I don't know why I just did. Uh, either way, let's just quickly roll around under the car and get by bit by more ants and see if there's any active oil pouring out it appears not to be yep that looks good all right well there you go thank you for watching this video hopefully it was helpful someone asked for a tutorial on how to change the oil at one point in time never got around to it but today i did so yeah if it was helpful or you liked the video or something like that, make sure to leave a like. If you're new and want to, subscribe if you'd like. I'm trying to get monetized on YouTube and maybe turn this into a hobby that actually pays. That would be neat. Either way, thanks for watching and have a great day.